The overview of the naming tools uh, mentioned quickly some improvements that have happening in the last year. And then mention basically one of the main usage that we see of our, across several uh, partners and integrators, which is how integrate the naming, KMAXON naming technology into their document processing uh, architecture. And then uh, that will pave the way for our um, next uh, speaker from SciByte, who has been uh, applying our technology. So uh, very high level and quick overview of the uh, naming uh, tools. Uh, well, th there are conversions in all directions. So one way to look at it is if you start from a document that contains uh, chemistry, uh, one of the things that we can do is to identify inside those documents the chemical names. Also, we can identify uh, images using uh, third-party tools. And so we can uh, extract this information, so identify the names. Then we have a uh, list of names with metadata about where they are found in the document. Uh, but also, given the names, we can get to the chemical structure. Of course, we could do that without a document, just a list of names that becomes a list of chemical structures. And we can go the other way around with uh, converting a structure uh, into a chemical name. It could be either a systematic IUPAC name, or it can be also the common names. And a bit on the side here, it's another process that we can do is given a document, give you another document, where we found all the chemistry based, again, on the names or the images and then annotate that document with, uh, with the information that we found. So this is what you can see in this screenshot, is that on the left you have documents which could be in various formats. And here what we find are IUPAC name, we find also the images uh, using a third-party optical structure recognition tool. And in this case we give you a HTML file that will uh, add up this chemical information to the document. So that's what, what we built uh, with the naming uh, tools. And if we step back a little bit and see how we can integrate that with other KMAXON tools to do a useful workflow. So basically the left side is what I already mentioned about the, the naming. And what you see appearing on the right is JCAM. So once you have the list of structures you found in your documents, it's quite natural that you could ins uh, insert that in a, in a JCAM uh, uh, database. And then uh, given that, then you can of course, uh, so this would happen, what called indexing, so at a, at a certain time, uh, ahead of time, let's say, and then the user will be on the right, so using Marvin.js to draw a query, and then query the database that has been built using the, the naming tools. And then get search results, and, uh, and uh, with the, the information about which documents contain that. And so this is all the tools that, that KMAXON uh, provides. Um, and so now uh, I will mention what has been changing recently, so there is a um, focus has been on the, the dictionary that we use for handling the, the common names, the drug names, uh, but based on uh, requests that we got from customers and potential customers, we uh, decided to go into new areas, so one of them is polymers, which we didn't have before, so the common names of polymers, and another one is herbicides and pesticides, so now we have specific dictionaries that are integrated, so out of the box, if you use uh, name to structure, you will also understand those common names. But we also made a, uh, an update for the, the usual dictionary, uh, which added 30,000 new names, and so these are things like new drug names that came up uh, in, the, in the recent, uh, in the last year, and in, in the recent times. Um, and so that, that has been one of the focus. Behind the hood, there are a lot of smaller things that we do constantly based on the user reports and feedback small bug fixes, some feature requests to make things more smooth. So I won't mention all of the things, but they are constantly happening and, and we are very happy to, to support you uh, and all our users. Uh, coming next, we are considering uh, to add German name to structure uh, because that's quite important, especially in the field of patents. Possibly also Korean, we are looking into that. Uh, and continue uh, actually to streamline our process to, to build a dictionary, which is quite complex because it has so many sources, but we want to make it very easy to do so that we can keep the dictionary up to date uh, very frequently. And the next is your request. So anything you, that in our users uh, comes up as, a, as something that they, they need, uh, we can give it a high priority and so keeps being uh, improved based on what's actually important and needed by our customers. And so with that being said, I would like to give the floor to our partner from SciByte, Adam Brown. Thank you very much to ChemAxon for giving us the invitation to speak here. Um, we work very closely with ChemAxon and um, have begun incorporating a lot of the features of the naming module um, into our tech directly. Uh, 
as Chemaxon has sort of uh, reciprocally been working to incorporate some of our technology in as well. Um, Sidebyte, for those who are not familiar, uh, is a semantics and text company. Um, we really work to um, unlock uh, the um, scientific information from unstructured free text. Um, so a little bit different than I think a lot of folks here are, are focused in on um, chemical images and chemical structures. Um, so we're really excited that Chemaxon has uh, such a robust chemical naming uh, module. Um, one of our key uh, differentiators in the space is that we um, really like to leverage world-class ontologies, um, public gold standards. Um, there's been a lot of work uh, in this space over you know, the better part of 50 years to standardize uh, biomedical text and, and really understand the concepts that are present there. Um, and what we've developed is a platform for uh, basically named entity recognition or the process of extracting scientific entities um, from free text. Um, I mentioned uh, ontologies. Um, when I say ontologies, uh, you know, for a semantics company, it's a little embarrassing because I'm not quite using ontology correctly. Uh, we take ontologies and we transform them into uh, taxonomies and thesauri for use with text mining. So if you're reading through uh, you know, a piece of text, you want to capture all scientific entities. You want to recognize which ones are synonymous, which ones are ambigu ambiguous. Um, and really use those to understand the scientific metadata that's latently present in things like publications, grants, uh, you know, patents, sky's the limit, even ELN content. Um, and we have uh, a large curation team that is really dedicated to um, extracting and, and maintaining those publicly available ontologies. Um, we're always trying to align back to industry standards uh, so that you're not tied into uh, proprietary ontologies. Um, and we do a lot of work to both in a rule-based way and, and actually, you know, the old-fashioned way manually um, enrich those ontologies with synonyms. Um, and one thing that we're very excited with is that you can actually customize or, or augment our existing ontologies or completely wholesale um, integrate new ontologies. Um, so the way we've actually been leveraging uh, the Chemaxon naming module is as a vocabulary, as an ontology, um, so that when we're reading through free text, um, you know, we're able to collect chemistry information. Um, we are biologists and, uh, you know, not typically biochemists, um, so we don't have all of the, uh, the answers when it comes to chemistry. Luckily, Chemaxon does. Um, so we have uh, basically plugged them in um, to our tooling. Um, just to give you a, a concrete example, so this is a, an interface of our named entity recognition tool, um, which we call Termite. Um, don't ask me about the name. Uh, we have basically plugged this in. So, you know, basically you pass in free text um, and you get out annotated text. Um, this is a, a demo interface. Um, typically, we're, we're plugged in as an API provider or a microservice provider. Uh, but you can see here we have this. Um, the CA local dictionary, which is actually behind the scenes calling all of the um, Chemaxon naming module capabilities. Um, this is sort of a trivial example of this. We're working on uh, basically enriching that content with a lot of the automated um, IUPAC naming, smile, and, uh, and inchy key generation capabilities that are part of Chemaxon's uh, tool suite. Um, you can see we cover things like genes, indications, species, typical biomedical concepts, um, as well as a lot of clinical dictionaries as well, um, currently working on incorporating CDISC. Um, so that's sort of a, a high-level overview of our integration. I wanted to provide a, uh, a more concrete example of how we might um, actually use uh, this Chemaxon capability. Um, so one of the things that uh, a number of our pharma partners are currently um, working on um, is the concept of phenotype triangulation. Um, and this is really identifying new research candidates based on mechanistic and phenotypic similarities between diseases. Um, this is something that's not particularly new, um, but mining it out of the literature has often been a, a challenging task, a um, bit of a bear just because um, this often requires a lot of expert curation from humans, which obviously costs money and time, um, and wouldn't it be nice if you could do this in a more automated fashion? 
Um, this is near and dear to my heart. I actually did my PhD on this, and I was one of those people who was actually reading the papers uh, to try and pull out some of this information. So um, they've, they've automated away my PhD, which I'm fine with. Um, in terms of phenotype triangulation, um, you know, the big problem here that we're, we're trying to get at is that many diseases, especially rare diseases, are understudied. They lack clear molecular mechanisms sometimes. Um, and you know, it's, it's very challenging to learn about them from the literature without searching and reading articles and becoming a, a, you know, a real world-class expert on a disease. Um, so we applied our uh, SciBite vocabs, um, which again are ontology-derived um, text mining vocabularies, um, and extracted relationships between uh, diseases and phenotypes on a sentence level. Um, using some clever pattern detection um, technologies, um, and then we're able to build a Neo4j uh, style graph database out of this for mining. Um, I was really happy to hear that a lot of folks are working on knowledge graphs here. This is something that um, we often do just as a, as a text mining company. Everything's about relationships and text, and you know, what better way to re uh, represent those than in some sort of graph database. Um, we have actually deployed this at a number of our customers um, and have identified you know, novel relationships between um, biological entities that had not um, previously been known to even uh, pharmaceutical uh, experts in the field. Um, in terms of what this actually looks like, um, typically, you know, just to give a, a very simplified graph here, we have three diseases, A, B, and C. Um, they may share some phenotypes in common. Maybe uh, disease A, disease B share some known mechanistic um, similarities, either genetic or uh, potentially you know, environmental. Um, B and C also share some known mechanistic associations. Um, and wouldn't it be nice if using these phenotypes um, as sort of backing and additional evidence, we could draw a line between A and, a and C. Um, and this is really a way to fill in a lot of the gaps that you see um, because you, know, you, you don't have um, access to patients, it might be a rare disease, um, and it's, it's really nice to be able to, um, you know, from, from my perspective, it's really nice to be able to think about um, drug repurposing opportunities. Um, and one way that we are currently um, working with our clients to actually integrate um, is to layer in uh, some of the naming module capabilities to this kind of a knowledge graph, um, you know, make it more chemically aware um, so that once you're able to draw that connection between disease A and disease C um, as part of those sort of phenotype triangulation, um, you could also potentially do some drug triangulation. So maybe you know that, uh, you know, uh, one of these drugs has proven efficacy on one of the two diseases, um, and you would be able to potentially repurpose that or find, uh, you know, novel chemical material um, that's closely related. I mean, we, I think we've seen a lot of really cool examples of traversing chemical simul similarity in graph databases as well. So really, I think the sky's the limit here, um, and, and we're really excited to, to be partners um, and to begin integrating um, ChemAxon's technology. And that's it for me. Any questions? Can you emphasize the connection with Chemaxon? Sure. So, I mean, basically the way we're doing this is we typically take in, um, you know, documents that contain unstructured text. Um, we're reading those to pull out biomedical related entities, and we're using Chemaxon's module to pick out the chemical entities. So, you know, IUPAC names or common names, um, you know, whatever happens to be in that document. Um, and we actually are working to plug in the, um, our, our OCR module with uh, Chemaxon's uh, chemical uh, structure detector 